The F-35 has been called the most advanced fighter jet in the world, but it's already being left behind. While nations scramble to upgrade their fifth-generation fleets, three countries have quietly joined forces on something far more powerful, a sixth-generation stealth fighter that can carry twice the payload of an F-35, that can cross the Atlantic without refueling, that can control drone swarms deep in enemy territory. And it's not American. It's not Chinese. It's GCAP. And by 2035, it could change everything. This isn't science fiction. The Global Combat Air Program, or GCAP, is a real project backed by the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy. It's designed to replace aging fleets and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most dangerous threats on the planet. The first demonstrator is set to fly in just three years. Full deployment, 2035. What makes GCAP different? It's not just another jet. It's a flying supercomputer. It can make decisions faster than a pilot. It can operate independently in areas where traditional support can't reach. And it's being built with one goal, dominate the skies for the next 50 years. While the US debates the future of its own sixth generation programs, GCAP is moving forward fast. If you think this is a game changer, type yes in the comments. Let's start with the basics. Why does GCAP exist? The world is more dangerous than it's been in decades. China is building sixth generation fighters. Russia is modernizing its air force. And the F-35, for all its strengths, is starting to show its limits. It's heavy, it's expensive, and it wasn't designed for the kind of warfare we're heading into. Japan, the UK, and Italy saw the writing on the wall. They needed something new, something that could operate across vast distances in the Pacific something that could handle the latest threats without relying entirely on American technology. So in December 2022, they made it official. This wasn't rushed. Japan had been working on its FX fighter program. The UK had Tempest, led by BAE Systems. Italy was contributing through Leonardo. Instead of building three separate jets, they combined their efforts. Here's what makes GCAP different. It's not just about stealth. It's about control. GCAP commands drones. It gathers intelligence. It makes split-second decisions in environments where human pilots can't react fast enough. And it's being built with one goal, dominate the skies for the next 50 years. Before we go further, if you're enjoying this breakdown, take a second to hit that like button and subscribe. Over 98% of viewers watch without subscribing. It costs nothing, but it helps us bring you more content like this. Now, let's talk about what this fighter can actually do. GCAP is a twin-engine, single-seat stealth fighter. It's big, about 20 meters long, with a wingspan of roughly 16.5 meters. That's larger than the Typhoon and the F-35, and that size matters. Why? Because size means fuel, and fuel means range. GCAP is designed to cross the Atlantic on internal fuel alone. The Typhoon needs to refuel three or four times. GCAP does it in one go. That kind of range is critical, especially in the Pacific, where distances are enormous and refueling tankers are easy targets. Then there's the payload. GCAP carries roughly double the weapons load of an F-35. That means more missiles, more bombs, more options in a fight. And it's all carried internally to maintain stealth. But the real advantage? The brains. GCAP is being designed with around 2 megawatts of electrical power. That's enormous. Why so much power? Because GCAP isn't just a fighter, it's a command center. It needs that power to run advanced radar systems, electronic warfare suites, and potentially even directed energy weapons, like high-power microwave systems. What does that mean? GCAP could disable enemy electronics without firing a shot. It could jam communications, disrupt radar, all while staying invisible. And then there's the drone factor. GCAP controls unmanned aircraft, not one or two, entire swarms. 
These drones can fly ahead, scout enemy positions, draw fire, or even carry out strikes themselves. The pilot coordinates everything. The engine? That's a joint effort between Rolls-Royce, Italy's Avio Aero, and Japan's AI Chai Corporation. They've already tested a full-scale ground demonstrator. And perhaps most importantly, GCAP has no fixed operational capability date. The jet is designed to keep evolving, always being improved, always being updated. That's a massive shift from how fighter programs used to work. But here's where it gets interesting. GCAP isn't just a technical marvel, it's a political statement, and not everyone is happy about it. Building a sixth generation fighter is hard, doing it across three countries, even harder. Right now, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Italy are equal partners. They're splitting the work, the costs, and the technology. A joint venture between BAE Systems, Leonardo, and Japan Aircraft Industrial Enhancement is expected to form this year. But there are complications. Japan is concerned about the timeline. They want GCAP operational by 2035, but with China ramping up its own sixth generation programs, some in Tokyo are getting nervous. Reports suggest Japan is considering buying more F-35s as a stopgap. Then there's the United States. Washington isn't thrilled about Japan's role in GCAP. Why? Because for decades, Japan has relied on American technology. GCAP changes that. It gives Japan independence, and that makes the U.S. uncomfortable. There's also been pressure from Israel, particularly over the possibility of Saudi Arabia joining the program. Saudi Arabia has expressed strong interest. They have the money, they want the technology, but Saudi ties to China and Russia have raised red flags, especially in Tokyo. Adding a fourth partner could bring billions in funding, but it could also slow things down and complicate decision-making. And then there's competition. In March 2025, President Trump announced the F-47, a new American sixth-generation fighter being developed by Boeing. It's expected to be ready before GCAP. But GCAP officials have made it clear. They're not competing with the F-47. They want interoperability as part of an integrated allied defense system. Still, the pressure is real. GCAP has to deliver on time, it has to perform as promised, and it has to avoid the cost overruns and delays that plagued programs like the Eurofighter and F-35. So what does all this mean? For the UK, Italy, and Japan, GCAP is more than a fighter jet. It's a statement of independence. It's proof that they can compete with the best in the world without relying entirely on American or Chinese technology. For our men and women in uniform, GCAP represents the future of air superiority. These are the systems that will protect our skies, our allies, and our interests for the next half century. The people designing GCAP, building it, and preparing to fly it are among the best in the world, and they deserve our respect and support. For the rest of us, GCAP is a reminder that the balance of power is shifting. The days of American dominance in military aviation aren't over, but they're being challenged. And that challenge is coming from allies, not adversaries. By 2027, we'll see the first demonstrator take flight. By 2035, GCAP could be operational. And by 2060, full rate production will still be going strong. Will it work? The technology is promising. The partnerships are solid, but the challenges are real. Tight timelines, political pressures, competing programs. GCAP has to navigate all of it. One thing is certain, the sixth generation fighter race is on, and GCAP is right in the middle of it. The F-35 changed the game, but GCAP is writing a new rule book, a fighter that thinks, that commands, that adapts, built by three nations with one goal, control the skies for the next 50 years.
If you found this breakdown valuable, hit that like button and subscribe for more military and defense content. Drop a comment and let us know, do you think GCAP will live up to the hype? Thanks for watching.